probably shouldn't say this, um, but I even had to do this uh, without a conscious relationship with God. <sighs> did I say that out loud? I did. Take a deep breath, girl. Hey everybody, my name is Dr. Vanessa R. Brooks and today's video is the first in a series where I'll be discussing the importance of stress management and uh, the ability to identify what burnout and compassion fatigue looks like and how it can affect your livelihood, including your, your money. If this is your first time watching my video, please do me a favor and subscribe to our channel and then turn on the bell so that you can get notified when we do post our next video or our next piece of content. So in this first video, I want to share a deeply personal story about my years as a human services professional and also my years as a pastor and how both of those careers that I absolutely loved led to extreme burnout, stress, compassion fatigue, anxiety, and PTSD. So yeah, this is a story about a journey that ultimately led me to have to vocate two careers, two professions that I absolutely loved. So I started my career with a heart full of compassion and a real desire to want to make a difference in the lives of others. Since I was a child, I've always felt like a supernatural calling to help other people. And so my career as a human services professional, as well as a pastor, meant that my days were filled with caring for people and listening to people's problems and trying to find ways to strategically solve their problems, whether that was through some type of policy interpretation or whether that was through some type of outreach uh, at the church. Um, my job as a social services um, supervisor, uh, program manager, as well as my job as a pastor was really centered around listening to the struggles of other people and providing support for those people and providing guidance for them. Um, so I was really committed to being there for my community. Um, I believe that my purpose was to serve and to uplift those who were in need. So over time, the weight of my responsibilities really began to take a toll on me, right? Um, I found myself constantly, constantly overwhelmed, working late into the night um, at my job at social services, and then sacrificing my own, um, my own well, my own well-being for the sake of other people. Um, like the emotional strain of hearing countless stories of pain and suffering really started to seep into my own life and into my own spirit. And I was always being called on. Um, I was always making myself available and I was always putting others first. And sometimes I even put people uh, first uh, when it came down to caring for my husband and being there for my children. <laughs> So there came a point in my life where I started to feel um, a deep, pervasive exhaustion that I really couldn't shake off no matter how hard I tried to. Um, if it wasn't just physical tiredness, it was... Um, 
an emotional and a mental fatigue that left me feeling empty and drained. Um, so I began to experience what I now know is compassion fatigue. And I'll talk in another, in another video how I even found that terminology. Um, and as I was experiencing compassion fatigue, I felt numb to the very stories that once moved me to action. Um, the joy and the fulfillment I was once, um, that I once found so much pleasure in in my work were now replaced by a sense of dread and burnout where I was really dreading getting up going to work every day and I was also dreading getting up going to the church um, for services or for um, events related to ministry. <sighs> so I remember a particular moment when I was sitting in my office at work and I was surrounded by like a mountain of paperwork and unanswered emails and stacks of my staff's cases that needed to be um, evaluated by me, right? And I realized that I had nothing left to give to anybody. Um, I remember sitting even in my office at work uh, at, at the church and just not even having the energy, mental energy or physical energy to even get up and go out to prepare for Sunday service to preach. Like it got so difficult for me to even focus on how to put a sermon together. Um, I really just started checking out like and I think the breaking point for church was um, and it's so it's so difficult like to talk about your story because I'm always thinking about the people that I'm trying to protect but I'll just briefly say I think the breaking point for me with burnout and just overwhelming stress and exhaustion was when a member of my church um, their brother-in-law visited our church for a special service we were having. And in the middle of the service, um, there was some commotion in the back of the church. Um, this person had literally walked, we had our offering time, right? And this person had literally walked around up to the offering basket to place their money in the offering basket and looked right in my face and said, hey, hey pastor. And they walked back to their seat and it was not even two minutes later when I heard just grueling screams from the back of the church and this young man had fallen out. And um, unfortunately he had a heart attack and, um, or I'm assuming it was a heart attack. Um, we tried to resuscitate him. We prayed feverishly over him. I remember hearing the screams, people saying, Pastor Brooks, you gotta do something, pray, pray. And I remember just laying over his body, his steel body, just praying and begging God to, you know, wake him up and to make sure he, to, you know, to heal him and it, to no avail. The ambulance came and took him away. And I think 30 minutes later, the family members contacted me to say that he had passed on. And that was the breaking point. And because I had so much shame and guilt um, and so much pressure to resurrect this man and to heal him. I was too ashamed to ever speak about it again to anybody. I was too ashamed to go get therapy about it. Um, I wasn't even able to attend his funeral. My husband attended his funeral on my behalf because I was so wounded and I was so broken and I felt like it was my fault. Um, and so I was running on empty, y'all. You know, <laughs> making the decision to um, to step away from my role um, as a pastor and as a human services professional 
was one of the hardest choices I've ever had to make in my entire life. And I, I really mean that from the depths of my soul. I experienced a lot of brutal um, online bullying and name calling and a very popular um, influencer took some of my content and shared it on their platforms on social media and the content went viral and just watching all these people, strangers who don't know me, have never met me, have not seen all of the work I've done for my community and for people around this country and ministry, really around the world, right, was so humiliating, embarrassing, demoralizing. I really believe that God called me to pastor and to work as a humanitarian, caring for people in a, in a professional way. Um, so I really didn't feel like I was, you know, abandoning um, my calling. And that sucks and it hurt. I felt like I was abandoning my community, people who were relying on me. I felt like I was abandoning myself. And I felt like I was abandoning God. But deep down inside, I knew that I couldn't continue on. I knew that the path I was on was going to eventually cause harm to my physical and mental health and well-being. So I made the very difficult decision to leave pastoring and my career as a human services professional. And I didn't just leave my role as a pastor. I, I left the church altogether. I'm going to talk more about my life after church and some subsequent videos, but let's move into the journey of healing for the purposes of this video. Um, so leaving the work I loved, both as a human services professional and as a pastor, was heartbreaking, as I've stated. But I also know in my heart and my spirit that that decision was also the beginning of a journey um, towards healing and self-discovery, a journey that was long overdue. And my inner child thanks me for finally saying yes to myself and to take on that journey of healing, right? Um, I had to learn the importance of self-care. Um, I had taken on two career paths that are notorious for causing burnout and compassion fatigue and extreme levels of stress and anxiety. And I did nothing to consciously um, practice self-care. I did what most black women do especially um, um, a lot of people in the health professions do this but we take on that strong black woman trope that black woman schema that strong black woman schema and we don't want to ever let it appear that we're weak or that we can't do it um that we're not capable so we just keep going and going and going and that's exactly what i did and so i really did have to learn the importance of self-care um, i had to learn the importance of se setting boundaries i'd never done that before in my life i was a yes girl okay i was a yes pastor and a yes human services professional I said yes to everybody all the time because i was afraid of what it would look like and what it would mean to say no to anybody, right? I'm gonna talk so much about, you know, why I sabotage myself so much in, in future videos. Um, but it really was necessary to learn the importance of self-care. Um, I started to focus on activities that nourished my soul, that nourished my spirit. Um, I started to spend time with my loved ones, my husband, um, 
spending more time talking to my children, my adult children, my sister, the people who are important to me. Um, I went on a journey of even finding friends because honestly, I never really had true friends because I was always in these helping professions, these helping roles where people don't really connect to you for friendship. They connect to you because of how you might be able to serve them. And so part of my healing journey is just learning how to be a friend, right? And learning how to attract genuine people um, into my life. Yeah, I ain't telling my guys the lipstick situation going on here. Um, so I sought support from even other professionals. I started going to therapy. Um, as as much as my ego don't want to say this part because y'all are so judgment judgmental of mental health issues, but not only did I get a, a therapist, I I hired a psychiatrist um, to help me with you know a lot of the chemical imbalances that these situations had created within me in, in terms of stress and anxiety and PTSD. I got my official ADHD diagnosis, which really is the reason why I had a lot of trouble focusing and concentrating on a lot of my, my assignments, right? Um, so I really needed the supportive professionals who understood my struggle. Um, and I did all of this over the space of five years away from the church, away from religion, away from ministry. And I know a lot of people are going to judge me. I probably shouldn't say this, um, but I even had to do this uh, without a conscious relationship with God. <sighs> did I say that out loud? I did. Take a deep breath, girl. Okay, we got through the first video in this series. I want to really truly thank each of you for listening to my story. Um, if you found this video helpful, please like, leave a comment, and share this with others who might also benefit from this conversation. Um, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel um, for more content like this. We'll talk a lot about life as a as a helping professional, um, life in corporate, um, um, life as a professional in general, and how um, we need to really manage um, our stress levels, and um, we need to be aware of how to take care of ourselves. And so we're going to talk a lot about um, self-care. So we're going to create a lot of content around self-care and burnout and compassion fatigue, um, taking care of ourselves so that we can take care of others. Um, so there's a lot more I want to share with you. I'm going to get really um, transparent and deep because that's just who I am as an authentic leader. Um, so yeah, I just want to say thank you for sitting through this if you made it this long. Um, make sure you leave a comment if you got to the end of this video. Um, you the real MVP, okay? So listen, I want y'all to take care, be blessed, and um, I'll talk to y'all again real soon, okay? So until the next time, this is Dr. Vanessa R. Brooks, and I'm signing out. Grace and peace.